So to outline the importance of energy efficiency in the global energy system moving forward, to um, build on what's been said in the opening session this morning, um, to describe some of the way the work that we're doing to try and advance the way um, we analyse energy efficiency and make it more interesting for uh, policymakers, and and to ask you to ask you if if this approach that we're taking is useful um, and. Is it helping and what else we can do going forwards? So we'll start with the picture that everybody's seen before, but it's a great framing for this conversation. This is the, um, the projections that we make to look at what um, needs to happen to move from the six degree world, so the business as usual world, to the two degree world. And um, the analysis suggests that about 40% of the um, the carbon emissions reductions required come from energy efficiency, 38% in end use and about 2% in, in power generation. So the energy savings that, that, that this scenario would achieve are comparable to the combined <coughs> consumption of China and the European Union in 2012. So we're talking about very, very large numbers. Um, and, and how are we doing? So we've heard a bit this morning about the INDCs. Um, by the time this analysis was done, over 140 of these were in, um, covering 85% of energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. <coughs> and this is what we think the INDCs as they stand would, ach would achieve um, in terms of carbon emissions. So. Um, they're a good start, but they don't actually even um, start to reduce the carbon emissions. They, they slow the rate of growth down, but they don't show us a reduction. So what the team at the IEA have done is come up with something they're calling the, the bridge scenario. So how do we go from the INDCs as they stand to the two degree C world that we're looking for? And this is the bridge scenario, and it tells us that End use energy efficiency um, is responsible for 49% of the difference between the INDCs and um, where we really want to be. <coughs> there are five measures only shown in this bridge, bridge scenario using proven technologies and they're all cost effective. So there's no harm to economic growth here. So where do these gains come from? So. Um, the dark blue bars on this chart are energy efficiency. The, the, the lime green is renewables. The brown is inefficient coal-fired power plants. The red is fossil fuel subsidies. And the purple is upstream methane reduction. So they're the five um, measures that have been looked at in the bridge scenario to try and keep things very simple. And you can see by the dominance of the, of the dark blue bars, this is where the 49% is made up geographically. Now, if we look at this in terms of breaking down just the energy efficiency component, uh, this shows us where we need to target our efforts in terms of energy efficiency. So road transport's big, as uh, you know, we all know, and we all know that it's an area that's uh, underserved at the moment. Industrial motors are large. Appliances and lighting are very large, as is heating and cooling. So there are four focal areas that we can concentrate on to achieve a great deal of those emissions reductions. I know this might seem slightly confusing, but China and the world are on one scale here and the rest of the countries are on another just because of the, the magnitude of the, of the potentials. So some of what the IEA is doing to try to um, uh, facilitate, to try and to help, the way, uh, help us achieve these uh, emissions reductions through energy efficiency, um, we have um, a few things here. The World Energy Outlook Climate Special, which is where the analysis I've just shown comes from. We have the Regional Energy Efficiency and Policy Recommendations, which we're going to be talking about tomorrow. We have the Energy Efficiency Market Report, which I'll talk about a bit more in a moment, and also um, our work on the multiple benefits of energy efficiency. So this year's market report, which was only published about 10 days ago, emphasises the investment markets and the importance of, the, uh, of efficiency in the entire energy system. It provides analysis to look back at what's actually happened, to provide evidence of the impacts of energy efficiency so that we have some concrete numbers to work on. 
And the intention is this, it, this helps policymakers design effective policy that's necessary to make the changes we, we need. So we're calling energy efficiency the first fuel. Everybody has probably heard, heard that said and why. This is an analysis just for 11 IEA countries where we have sufficient data, going back to 1973, the time of the first oil crisis. This is total final energy consumption of those uh, 11 IEA countries. Uh, the red's oil, the orange is gas, um, and um, you can see the other fuels down the right-hand side of this. But if we estimate how much investment has been made in energy efficiency and the impacts of that investment, we show that energy efficiency has actually made the largest contribution to meeting energy demand than any other of fuel. So that's why we use the term the first fuel. Now, clearly it's a hypothetical case, but it's based on um, uh, some comprehensive analysis. Now, as a result of that energy efficiency, the consumers in those countries are saving hundreds of billions of dollars each year. So this isn't just about carbon emissions reductions. It's not about um, environment or the climate even. Um, there are hard, concrete savings here. And these savings are greater than the um, EU's annual um, fuel import bill. So massive numbers. Moving on to the um, multiple benefits of energy efficiency, so another uh, sort of strand in this um, analysis. There are many benefits of energy efficiency, and the, the priorities vary from country to country. So for some countries, it's, it's carbon. For some countries, it's, it's energy savings. Um, for other countries, it's um, providing a secure and safe energy supply. Every country will have its own priorities. And what we're trying to do here is um, help people analyze these benefits and try to see if we can provide messages for energy efficiency that appeal to government's um, economic and social development objectives. So uh, in, in circumstances where potentially energy efficiency just isn't a priority. So I'm gonna give you two examples here just to work through this. So Thailand's a country well known for being rich <coughs> in energy resources. But the Im energy imports in Thailand are rising rapidly. Um, this is an analysis of the um, incremental energy demand in Thailand by sector and fuel between 2011 and 2035. So large increases in energy demand. Um, but this chart gives us some interesting areas to focus on. Power generation, which is a huge growth area, um, is being provided through coal and, and natural gas. Industry has a large natural gas, um, and transport and the other sectors uh, are using a great deal more oil than they are today. But let's just take electricity generation because it's, it's the biggest of those items. So uh, electricity generation in Thailand um, over the past um, decades uh, has, has been provided for in this way. And you can see the yellow bar here. It's the increase in, in fossil fuels. It's the, well, it's an increase in natural gas, actually. Now, there's an issue with that. So, coal imports um, over the same time period. The green here is production. The purple is imports. So, coal imports have rapidly risen. Gas imports are rising now. Oil products, um, whilst they're still a net exporter, there are still significant imports. And if you put all of that together, there's a huge increase in import of fuel fossil fuels. And if you look at the last two, but this is the cost of those imports to the Thai economy. <coughs> if you look at 2011 and 2012, there's nearly a 17% increase in cost to the Thai economy through importing these fuels, mainly for power generation and transport. So the question arises, Thailand has a high dependency on fossil fuels, imported fossil fuels, at a high cost to the economy. Energy security could become a challenge. Energy efficiency could, of course, be a large part of that solution. 
So what we're trying to do here is suggest that rather than talk about energy efficiency, maybe in this context, it's more important to talk about energy security. And that could be the driver for energy efficiency. That could be the thing that makes the, 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 the senior decision makers much more interested than energy efficiency in its own right. Another quick example here, Indonesia. So energy self-sufficiency, not a major issue in Indonesia. But there is an issue with the domestic rise in electricity demand. Again, similar chart here showing power generation, large amount of coal, um, but this is the, uh, the sector that's growing most rap rapidly between 2011 and 2035. And this is the required electricity generation predicted by the Indonesian government over the, the coming decade. The um, expectation is that the green bars are the traditional um, government investment in power generation. The red bars are independent power producers, which is an, a new um, initiative in Indonesia, but has yet to be uh, fully established. And the blue bars show um, capacity that's expected to be needed, but the source of that is not, not yet identified. So that increase in capacity it requires an investment of 13.8 billion US dollars per year between 2013 and 2022. But probably more importantly, it requires an increase in generating capacity of seven gigawatts a year between um, now and ab about um, 2018, I think it is. Now, the, only, the, the maximum uh, added capacity that's ever been achieved in the past is one. So we have to go to from one to seven <coughs> overnight. That's very challenging, not just in terms of money, but in terms of just the capacity to build the infrastructure, even if the money is available. And talking about the money, there is this increased demand, but the income from selling power is not rising at the same rate as the um, capacity or that the, the demand is rising. So looking at this again, so rapidly increasing electricity demand, high costs for the economy. Unreliable and inad inadequate supply could be a political challenge in the future. Energy efficiency, again, could be a large part of the solution. So this also suggests that if we talk about um, energy efficiency helping Indonesia transition to a, an adequate, safe, secure, reliable e electricity supply, that might be a more attractive message than talking about energy efficiency and climate. So just, just to finish on, um, they were, they're local problems. Um, this is a local problem that's a global problem. So this is something that we all face. Uh, a local air pollution causing health problems in cities, causing costs to businesses, causing costs to health services, um, affecting the health and well-being of, of global citizens. Um, would anybody like to tell me where this is? Well done. It's <laughs> Paris. It's <laughs> Paris and it's only two years ago. So, so, um, so, so this, this is a problem that affects us all. So in other countries, it might not be security of supply. It might be um, the, the effects on, 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 on local air conditions. So, so my question to you is, 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 what benefits matter most? What will attract the attention of our leaders? Where should we focus our an analysis in the, in the future? So they're the things I'd, I'd like answers to. And just a, a brief advert, um, we're w in looking at this different uh, axis, I suppose, to thinking about energy efficiency, we having an event in the green zone at the COP on the 1st of December, which we're calling Energy Efficient Prosperity. And um, you're all welcome to attend. And there we will be trying to um, demonstrate stories of how energy efficiency has had a positive impact on the economic and social development objectives of um, the major emerging economies. Thank you.